Now let's take up question number 52. It states that in the given figure M and N are two plane mirrors. Angle QRS is to angle PQR 13 is to 5. If PQ is an incident ray and RS is a reflected ray and PQ parallel SR then difference between measure of angle PQN and angle SRM is. Here these are the four options provided to you. Out of these four options you will find the difference of the two angles. You can observe this diagram. Here on basis of this diagram and on basis of this given information we will be solving this question. So let us focus on this diagram. Here M and N are plane mirrors. What happens in case of plane mirror? In case of a plane mirror if there is incident ray and reflected ray then you have a normal incident ray and reflected ray make equal angle with the normal. But before that it has been stated in this question that angle QRS and angle PQR are in the ratio 13 is to 5. If I consider this to be 13 x this will be 5 x and it is also provided that PQ is parallel to SR. If PQ is parallel to SR then these are two cointerior angles. Sum of any two cointerior angles is 180 degrees. So in this case Further, you will obtain that 13x plus 5x is equal to 180 degrees because these are cointerior angles and it results the value of x is equal to 10 degrees. If x is equal to 10 degrees, then this means that this angle is measuring 130 degrees and this angle is measuring 50 degrees. Next, we were talking about plane mirror and I already told you that the incident ray makes equal angles with the normal as well as the reflected ray. So, if I draw here a normal and if I draw here another normal you will find that in this case here it makes equal angle with the normal. In this case you are going to find that its total is 50 degrees. So, this angle will be measuring 25 degrees and this angle will also measure 25 degrees. Moreover here in this case this is 130 degrees so this angle will measure 65 degrees and this remaining angle will measure 65 degrees. As you can see this is normal it is definitely making here an angle of 90 degree with this mirror. So if this angle measures 90 degrees out of that let us consider this point to be T. PQT is measuring 25 degrees so 90 minus 25 degrees this angle will measure 65 degrees. Same follows here. Here this normal TR is definitely perpendicular to this mirror. Here angle TRS is measuring 65 degrees. So, this remaining angle SRM will measure 25 degrees. So, now we have figured out the measure of angle PQN and SRM. So, I could definitely write angle PQN minus angle SRM is definitely equal to 65 degrees minus 25 degrees that is equal to 40 degrees. So, the required answer for this question is 40 degrees. Out of these four options you can clearly find the answer is here in option number 1. You can mark the answer to be option 1. I hope it is clear to you. Let us take up our next question. Here I have this question which states PQRS is a trapezium such that PQ is parallel to SR. If M and N are midpoints of PQ and SR respectively such that M and N is perpendicular to SR then which of the following is always true. So, in this case we are talking about the trapezium where M and N are midpoints. On basis of this condition you need to figure out which of these options will be always true. So, let us solve this question. For that very first I am going to draw here a trapezium. So, when you consider this trapezium, let us consider this to be trapezium PQRS where you definitely have the points here I am considering this is the line here I have the point M on PQ and here I have the point N on SR. Now, MN is also perpendicular to SR here MN is perpendicular to SR. Let us further join SM and MR. After joining this 
as per the previous information this is the midpoint so sn is equal to nr moreover pm is equal to mq now if you observe this triangle snm and rnm sn is equal to rn and these two angles are 90 degrees this is the common side so i can clearly see here side angle side congruence criteria these two triangles will be congruent i could write here triangle snm is definitely congruent to triangle rnm by side angle side congruence criteria and if these two triangles are congruent their corresponding parts are equal which results here that firstly side sm is equal to mr next it results that angle smn is definitely equal to angle rmn by CPCT. These are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. If I consider this to be x, this is also x. Moreover, I have this as a trapezium, SR is parallel to PQ. If I have MN perpendicular to SR, this also makes MN perpendicular to PQ at point M. If this is x, remaining angle will be 90 degrees minus x and here this remaining angle will be 90 degrees minus x and we have already obtained that SM is equal to RM. Now focus on this triangle SMP and triangle RMQ. In these two triangles we have SM equal to RM. We have these two angles that is angle SMP equal to angle RMQ measuring 90 degrees minus x. We have PM equal to QM. So these two triangles are also now congruent by side angle side congruence criteria. Next I could write that angle SMP is also equal to angle RMQ as these are measuring 90 degrees minus x because we have considered these angles to be equal to x. Taking that case into consideration, we finally obtain that triangle SMP is definitely congruent to triangle RMQ because we have MP equal to MQ and we have SM equal to RM. These are also congruent by side angle side congruence criteria. If these are congruent, through CPCT you obtain that PS is equal to QR. Therefore, I have PS equal to QR. This is a clear condition that PS will be equal to QR. And when I observe the four options provided to me, I can clearly see in option number two, I have PS equal to QR. Rest of the option depends on the dimensions of the sides of the trapezium. But you will always find that PS is equal to QR. This we have obtained on basis of two congruent triangles. You can definitely mark the answer for this question is option two. I hope it is clear to you. Let us take up our next question. Here I have question number 54. It states that the sum of weight of students of a class is 1480 kg. The average weight of boys and girls are respectively 50 kg and 40 kg. Then the possible number of pairs of girls and boys is out of these options that is 5, 6, 7 and 12. So as we are talking about mean weight, here the sum of weight of students of the class is 1480 kg. Let us consider that the number of boys in the class is B and the number of girls in the class is G. If I take that into consideration then sum of weight of all the boys will be given by average weight into number of boys because how do you find average? Average is sum of weight of all the boys upon number of boys. So if you have average weight, you multiply it with number of boys, you get here the sum of weight of all the boys. This is given by 50B. Sum of weight of all the girls of the class will be 40G. Now we already know that sum of weight of all the students of the class is 1480 kg. That means sum of weight of boys plus sum of weight of girls is equal to 1480. So on basis of this, we draw a relationship that 50B plus 40G is equal to 1480. You can further simplify this. On further simplification, I get here that 5B plus 4G is equal to 148. This could be further reduced to get the value of G. I can clearly get that G is equal to 
37 minus 5 upon 4B. Now, here we have drawn a relationship between B and G. You can see B represents number of boys in the class and G represents number of girls. From this equation, it is quite clear that B will be definitely a multiple of 4, then only you can obtain the integral value of number of girls. So, let us obtain the possible pairs of B and G. So, I could write possible pairs of number of boys and number of girls. So, if I consider B as 4, then I clearly get G as 32. If I consider here B as 8, I get here G as 27. If I consider B equal to 12, I get G is equal to 22. If I consider B as 16, I get G as 17. If I consider B as 20, then in that case, I get G equal to 12. If I consider B as 24, I get G is equal to 7. Next, when I consider B as 28, I get G equal to 2. So, this is the only possible cases for this condition. You can find total 7 possibilities are there for the number of boys and girls in the class. And when you observe the 4 options given to us, you can clearly see 7 is present in option number 3. So, you can definitely write the answer for this question is option 3. I hope this question is clear to you. Let us take up our next question.